Welcome back. It's time for us to get back on the road with our road trip quilt. Today we're going to start with the navigation block, which is this block up here. You're going to do one that finishes at nine inches, and then you're going to do three that finish at six inches. The navigation block is nothing more than just a nine patch. The center patch is an hourglass, four squares of background, and then this little triangle piece known as a peaky spike. Now, when you received your kit, you should have gotten a piece of paper that looks like this. And in it, you were told to cut this section an alternate way. And the reason I had you cut that an alternate way is because I'm going to show you an alternate way to do the hourglass. The way I'm going to show you is faster, easier, and it's more accurate. It's faster because there's less cutting, less sewing, and you make two at a time. It's easier because you don't have to sew any bias seams and more accurate because it's slightly oversized and then you cut it down to size. You can convert any pattern that uses the hourglass to this method by remembering just a simple equations. What you want to do is you want to look at the instructions for assembling your quilt to find out how big your hourglass component needs to be. I'm going to be demonstrating the six and a half inch block, so our hourglass needs to be two and a half inches. So I'm going to take the two and a half inches and I'm going to add one inch to it. And so we have the measurement of three and a half inches. Then out of the two fabrics that the hourglass is going to be made out of, we are going to cut two three and a half inch squares. Okay, so now I've got my two squares that I have cut at three and a half inches. I'm going to use my sandboard that I told you about uh, in a previous class. So the first thing I want to do is on the back of my lighter one is I want to draw my diagonal. Now, this pen right here, this is made by Clover. It is an ink pen that has white ink. When you first do it, it appears that the line, it did not mark. But if you give it just a few seconds, the white line will appear. It's like magic. It's now one of my favorite pens. So once I've marked it, I'm going to take my two squares and I'm going to put them right sides together. And then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch on each side of the line. So I'm just going to sew down one side, leaving my quarter inch, and then I can just rotate it and sew down the other side. So now I've got my two seams on here. My drawn line now becomes my cutting line. And then I'll take it to the ironing board and I'm going to press it open. And I'm gonna press my seams towards the dark. And now I have two half square triangles. Now I'm going to take one of my squares and I'm going to turn it to the wrong side and I wanna again, draw the diagonal. Make sure you're drawing that diagonal perpendicular to your sewing line. And give it just a few seconds and it will appear. Now I'm going to take the square that I didn't mark and I'm going to put it right side up. Then I'm going to take this square and I'm going to turn it opposite of what this square is and it will be placed on the top. Now because we've 
uh, iron these both towards the dark, your seams will nest. Over time, you'll learn to be able to feel whether your seams are nesting. And how you can tell that is if you feel it, if you feel a little ditch, then it means that your seams are too far apart. If you feel it and you feel a little bump, then it means that your seams have overlapped. You want it to feel nice and smooth so that they are perfectly up against one another. If necessary, you can put two pins. I would pin it parallel to the line so that way they don't interfere with your sewing. Now that I have my seams nested, again, I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch on each side. Okay, so now we're ready to sew. And again, I'm going to sew down one side. And then I can turn it and sew down the other side. Now we are gonna cut these two apart, but first I always like to take a little peek. Did my points line up? That way, if I need to do any adjustment, I can do it before I cut them apart. Now our drawn line becomes our cutting line. And so I have just made two of our hourglasses, but we're not gonna press it open just yet. Now we're going to cut it down because it is oversized. This is the Quilt in a Day Triangle Square Up Ruler. We want our component to measure two and a half inches, so I'm going to find the line that says two and a half inches. I'm gonna turn this around so that it'll be right side up to you. And I am going to take that line that is two and a half inches, and I'm going to line it up with my sewing line, not the outside line, remember the sewing line. Then this vertical line here needs to line up with this sewing line. Once I have these two lines all lined up, I can just go through, cut off that little bit of excess, hard to cut upside down. I slipped a little bit. Now, when I open it up, there is my two and a half inch. And I can just simply take this to the iron, press the seam to one side, and clip my little dog ears. And I have a perfect two and a half inch hourglass. Now, when we go back to your sheet, you are also told to use method four for your peaky spikes. It gives you four different ways in which you can make this. I've tried several of them. And for me, the method four, which is paper pieced, is the easiest and most accurate to do. So we'll use method four for cutting. So back to our paper piecing. Remember, you're going to need your double-sided tape, your mylar, and your add a quarter ruler. So on the back, I'm going to put my little piece of tape, and then I'm going to take my large blue square because I've got my two mediums done and I have one of the large blue ones, so I need to make one more dark blue one. So I'm going to take this and make sure that this entire area is covered. So that piece is piece one. Then this line between piece one and piece two, I'm going to place my mylar and simply fold this over. Then using my add a quarter ruler, 
I'm going to cut my quarter inch. These are my background squares. I'm going to take my background fabric and I'm going to place it. And I want to make sure because this is the corner that it needs to cover. So I don't want to put it too far up or too far down. I want to make sure that when it flips over that it covers the area. If you need to, remember you can put a pin in it, but the pin needs to go on your paper side. And that's because you sew from the paper side and you don't want to run over a pin that is hidden. So now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna start out here and I am going to sew the line between A1 and A2. Before we sew this, remember, we need to shorten our stitch length just a little bit. So now I can sew the line between A1 and A2. And I can just sew right off the edge of the paper. Then I'm just gonna take it to the iron, press that over. Now we need to sew between A1 and A3. So I'm going to place my mylar on that line. I'm going to fold it back and you see the fabric wants to come over just a little bit and that's because of the seam we just did. So I just give it a gentle tug and it will lay back down. Then I use my quarter inch ruler And I trim off and then flip it back. Take my other piece. I'm going to place it on, making sure that I have it in the right location. Put a pin on the paper side. Now I can take it and sew the line between A1 and A3. Then I just go to the iron, give it a quick press. Now that I have everything sewn, now I can go back and I can cut on my dotted line. This measurement will be two and a half inches. And there is my navy blue peaky spike. So now we have all of our pieces together and we're ready to assemble our block. We're gonna start with our hourglass. And then you'll take your peaky spike, making sure that you line it up with the proper color. See, I didn't line it up. Now it's lined up right. And then I'm going to take my background squares, which are the corners. Now it is just a straight nine patch. I'm going to sew these three into a row. Once I get my three rows, then I can sew my rows together. And that is how you make the navigation block.